Hello, Seward United Methodist Church. It's Mary Kay and Joellen. We're so glad to be doing this video today. We wanted to take a moment to update you about all the stuff that's going to be starting up. Are you excited? I'm excited, Mary Kay. I can't wait to make it just feel a little bit more like we can get together. Yeah, it's not going to be exactly the way it was back in February or January, but we have been weighing all the information we have from healthcare professionals, all the recommendations, all the best practices. And so there are a number of things that are getting started this Sunday, September 20th. And we wanted to provide this kind of video update to let y'all know what to expect and how things are going to happen. And we're excited. It's very exciting. Even though the first thing is 8 a.m. worship. Oh, that's <laughs> early. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> but we will be doing 8 a.m. worship, which will have traditional music. And then we will have 1030 worship, which will have more praise music. The rest of the services will be the same. And both of those services will be live streamed. And this Sunday, we also start a new worship series entitled Grace Abounds. One of the things that John Wesley has taught is that we experience grace from God in so many ways, particularly prevenient, justifying, and sanctifying grace. And in this worship series, I will be sharing with you three story sermons, stories I have written to help teach about those differing forms of grace. Of course, I'm not going to be by myself on Sunday morning. Wes will be here with, with music people providing us wonderful inspiration and Joellen will be here and she will share a little bit about children's time. So as part of coming back to two worships, we're now ready to begin to invite the children a little closer. So if you're here in the building with us, we've added these awesome Velcro dots, which were given by one of our church members, and have placed them spread out six to eight feet apart up here at the front of the sanctuary. And so during children's time, I'll invite children who are already in their masks, because remember we have our mask on and we're sitting far apart in the sanctuary to come on up a little closer so we can engage in story and conversation and prayer as part of the church family together. One of the good things about moving back to two worships also includes that we can have more people. So we're gonna to continue to be spread out, wearing our masks, and during the between time, Campbell's cleaning will still come in and spray the whole place down and the air will circulate and it should help us a lot. So we'd surely appreciate you using your things that you need to keep us safe, and we look forward to seeing you, hopefully this Sunday. Worship's gonna be great, Mary Kay. I hope so. And the people being here is part of what helps make it great. Hey guys, so here we are in our Welcome Center, and I know many of you have probably not been inside for a while, but we've added back our worship bag tree. We'll have about half of them available, we invite you to take them, use them at your space, and when you're done, instead of hanging them back on the tree, you're gonna put them on the table right behind the Welcome Center, and we'll set up new bags for the later worship time. We'll let them air out all week, and then they'll be ready to go for the next Sunday. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. I love looking out and seeing you here at worship. On first Sundays of the month, we will continue to offer communion and we ask everyone to bring their own communion elements with them. This is the way that seems easiest and safest for us to share communion together these days. If you should forget, we will have a few crackers and some small bottles of water here at the Welcome Center for you to use if you forget to bring your own elements on Communion Sunday. Hello, church. Music and worship may look and feel a little different during the pandemic. When there is a hymn or a psalm provided, we invite you to participate through humming, through clapping, through snapping, or through looking at the words and reflecting upon their meaning. You will also be invited to speak some of the verses of the songs or to participate with sign language, such as we've been doing with the doxology in recent weeks.
We hope that you'll participate in some of these ways. If you're interested in participating with worship through special music, either with an instrument or with your voice and singing, please let me know and we can incorporate you in our worship gatherings. Our handbell choir has also begun rehearsals again and will provide some special music offerings at worship. We will also begin our virtual choir if you're interested in singing from home and putting it together through a virtual choir or helping in some other way with music, just let me know. Thanks. Of course, we understand it may not always be possible for you to attend worship in person, or you may feel safer worshiping from home. And both our 8 o'clock and 10.30 a.m. worship services will be live streamed for you to enjoy from a mobile phone, from your tablet, from your computer, maybe your smart TV, whatever device you have. And so we hope that if you're not able to attend in person or you're choosing to stay home, that you will still continue to worship with us from home via our live stream at both 8 o'clock and 10.30 a.m. Some of the other things that we'll be starting now that we're doing a little more here at the church, will be taking place here in the social hall. We have all kinds of things that will begin. On Sunday morning, the Galusha class will be meeting in here. And as you can see, we have the tables spread out. Now, if couples in the same family are together, they can sit close together at the end of one of the tables, but otherwise folks can spread out for that social distancing and wearing a mask. We will also be in here on Thursday mornings, which is when I will be teaching Bible study. And our first session will be on Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Life Together. We ordered copies from chapters and we have those available in the church office if you want to be a part of this study. I would certainly welcome as many as are interested. And then on Wednesday nights, we will have our programming for children. That's our refocus. Joellen, you want to tell us some more? I'd love to. I'm really excited that we'll begin some things with the children. I invite the children though to continue online on following the links that we're posting each week on our Facebook or in our news. But on Wednesdays, we'll invite you to join us right outside in the parking lot for a tailgate sack dinner. We will ask you to respond to an email text and or a link so that we know how many are coming in your family. We'll have sack dinners for each person. You'll pick those up from a safe distance and then take them back to your car area. And then we invite you to sit outside, maybe in your chairs, or if it's raining, have a picnic in your car at 5.30 on Wednesdays. And then at six o'clock, we're gonna come inside some weeks and outside some weeks. And we have a bunch of neat things that we're gonna do. So might include things like Bible presentations for kindergartners and third graders. One of my favorites I'm looking forward to, I've never been to, is a blessing of the animals. And we'll be doing that obviously outside. And then other thematic weeks where we'll have a Bible story and interactive hands-on things to do. Of course, this is for all ages and stages of life, but particularly children, as we've really been missing you. So Sunday mornings at 9.15, starting this week, September 20th, confirmation begins again. And we will be meeting in this large UMYF room so that there's plenty of space for us to socially distance and wear our masks. The other thing happening at 9.15 is the Galoosh study upstairs in the fellowship hall. Now, those are the only two study groups on Sunday. And we know that's not the full-blown Sunday activities, but there are reasons for that. One, we want to protect the most vulnerable in our midst, including some of our typical Sunday school teachers. We also don't want to get the building too crowded, and these hallways can get pretty busy and bustling, and there's not a lot of bathrooms, and Folks would get crammed into the bathroom trying to get in and out in a hurry. So we're trying to space things out and not have too much in the building all at once until world, the world gets to a much safer place. 
Any thoughts you want to add on that, Joellen? I will add something I heard just today as part of our church responsibility is not just for our own church family, but for our community. And if we can stop some more of the spreading, that means some of our older populations who live in our senior housing will be able to have more visitors and less testing. So it's a really good idea to help the community as a whole. One thing we will do though, to continue operating for parents and families, our Hastings family and our Soster family are going to begin sponsoring a parenting fellowship Zoom. So watch for details about how to sign up for that group so that you can continue to meet online as we continue during this time. So the staff has worked really hard to come up with something for all our age groups during a week. So it's not everything that we've done. And though we won't be having Sunday school on Sunday mornings, we do have refocus on Wednesday night that we talked about a little earlier. So that will be our programming for children during the week. For our youth, we have UMYF and Godparents. We do think it's important to continue confirmation, so we have it. For adults, we have the Galoosh study and we have the Thursday morning Bible study. While we remain in the moderate risk yellow zone of the Four Corners risk gauge, the office is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you know you'll find Shelly here, happy to greet you and taking care of all kinds of business. Thank you, Shelly, for everything. You're welcome. So all of the activities that we have been talking about, the ones inside the building, we're asking folks to wear their masks and to sit at a social distance. And we know that we don't like wearing masks. I don't like wearing masks. And yet I also know that consistently study after study shows that wearing a mask protects other people. So we will wear the masks to look out for each other and particularly the most vulnerable in our midst. And we know it's hard and we know it's a struggle. I know that when I first came, Joellen had a huge struggle with a mask. I sure did. I started out trying out a shield and then slowly each day, just a little bit longer and a little bit longer. With my asthma, it was just hard. But I know it's important, not just for me, but for other people, for our children to stay in school, for our elderly to be able to have visitors. So I'm wearing a mask. And when I see you on Sunday, I'll wave, I'll smile with my eyes, I'll give you an I love you. One of the best things I believe Mary Kay has given us is that blessing at the end. Our hands, our eyes continue to speak, even if we are wearing a mask. And so we'll wear the mask for a while. And as, I'm just going to call it a little bit of a reward for wearing a mask. We think we can safely sing together one song at the end of each worship service. Now, there are a variety of studies being done about singing while wearing a mask, and all the results aren't back in, and the studies are based on wearing a particular type of mask with a particular type of filtration and not singing for long periods of time. So we have talked and consulted as we always do with our community faith, faith community nurses, with Dr. Kettner. We check in with the educators, with our pouring in team two that looks, team one that looks at um, nurture, worship and fellowship. So we get as much feedback as we possibly can to make the best possible decisions. And what we know about singing with masks right now is that it's moderate risk. And if we do so only for a brief time and then leave the space where the singing has happened, it lowers the risk. So at the end of each service, we will sing one hymn with our masks on following the benediction. I'll do the benediction and then we will sing together. So if anyone is uncomfortable with the singing, you can go on and leave and not have missed any of the other of the service. 
And then the rest of us, we will sing and then leave the space so it can be sanitized and aired out to prepare for the next service. So we're going to give it a try and we're going to pray that we all stay safe and healthy. The last thing I want is to serve a church that becomes a hot spot. I'm sure you don't want our church to become a hot spot either. No, definitely not. Now, Joellen, you and I both know that what people are really missing about Sunday mornings is not so much worship, but fellowship and hanging out and talking. So what we have decided we're going to invite you to do is on Sunday mornings have B-Y-O-C-C. -C. Bring your own coffee and chair. Yay! So bring your lawn chairs, bring your coffee, and set up here on the lawn at a safe distance so you can see each other's faces and talk a bit and have some fellowship time. We also hope to provide some prepackaged snacks. I know, not as good as the homemade stuff. I'm waiting until we can do homemade <laughs> stuff again. But we will have prepackaged things so there's a little nibble as everyone can visit. And sometimes it might even be free. We know that makes our faith community nurses so happy. So maybe a small orange or a small apple. I'd encourage you as you show up on Sunday mornings, pick out your spot. We all know you have a favorite place. Place your chair, spread it out. And when you come out from worship, have a seat, spend some time talking and get back into our faith community together. And when you come for worship on Sunday mornings, everyone is going to enter through these red doors. See you Sunday. See you soon.